There are over 11,000 grasshopper species in the world, but they all have one thing in common. Everything loves to eat them. Here in the US, one grasshopper has figured out a trick to cheat their predators and grow to massive proportions, all thanks to a crazy toxic secret. Life is pretty challenging for a grasshopper. The good news is your food is everywhere. Just about any vegetation will do. The bad news is lurking in any plant that you're eating could be one of the thousands of predators who look at grasshoppers as an easy meal. These insects don't have a strong bite or a venomous sting to protect themselves, so grasshoppers have evolved much more cunning defenses to survive this onslaught of attackers. From fast, unpredictable flight to some of nature's most impressive camouflage. Running and hiding won't always keep you safe though, but today, we're looking for a grasshopper whose strategy is the exact opposite. My name is Harrison, and this is Evan. We're twin brothers on a mission to help you become an insider in the natural world. And that all starts by breaking down how the weirdest and coolest things in nature actually work. Our target today is the Eastern Lubber Grasshopper, an unmistakable species who has developed a fascinating chemical answer to their predator problem. And we're gonna show you how it's made them into true beasts. We've come to Florida in search of another one of the United States' most infamous toxic giants. But the Eastern Lubber is massive in its own right, and to boot, they're absolutely everywhere down here. Even after many trips to the Sunshine State, though, we've never told their story before. But that changes today, and we know just the guy to help us do it. We have a fun mission today. We're looking for grasshoppers. And when it comes to looking for orthopterans, grasshoppers and katydids, there is only one person on the internet who we could think of to join us for this mission. Oh look, who's that? It's Spencer. Yay. Spencer, what are we looking for today? Well, today we're looking for rattlesnakes. <laughs> the one time, it's <laughs> the one time he's allowed to say we're looking for grasshoppers. He doesn't take the bait. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's find grasshoppers. This really wasn't much of a search, since grasshoppers are so abundant out here that we've never come to Florida without seeing dozens of these guys in pretty much any habitat we explore. The grasshoppers we're targeting aren't exactly masters of camouflage, and literally within five minutes, we and Spencer had found two nice-looking specimens. Oh, sweet. Ha, this is perfect. Come here. Oh, look at you. Nice. Spencer literally just caught another one of these, but it's a totally different color. We'll show you them side by side. This is an Eastern Lubber Grasshopper. And we really want to take a closer look at these guys because they are one of the coolest grasshoppers in the entire country, in my opinion. Check this out. All right, now this guy is a pretty decent size for a grasshopper, but take a look at this big girl. That is a female and this guy is a male. Now That's the a male? Yeah, take a look at the back of the abdomen. Yeah, that's a male. Holy crap, he's big. Yeah. This female here is about as big as this species can get. They'll grow to be about five to seven centimeters in length, about two to three inches. At a maximum, they'll get maybe three and a half inches. And I would say this female here is definitely pushing that. These are super impressive orthopterans. And in fact, this is the largest grasshopper species in the entire country. And as you saw, they're not actually that difficult to catch for grasshoppers. Hoppers. As you can see, they do have wings, but they cannot fly at all. They might flutter them as a little bit of a defense because they're so thick and veiny that it makes a lot of noise when they move them. And stuff like that, they're not totally defenseless. They can use that size and the sounds and stuff they make. They'll stridulate and almost make a hiss when you pick them up sometimes. And they have these powerful back legs. They're just armed in line with these really, really hard spikes. It's a big, clumsy grasshopper, but they're not squishy. They're built like a tank. And they may be slow moving, but don't underestimate them. They are strong. And those back legs, if they give you a kick, you are gonna feel it. They are powerful insects. And that's kind of evidenced by the fact that we've been pretty much seeing them all over the place while we've been exploring down here in South Florida. We just happened to see really bright colored ones that looked super cool and we had to just stop and film them. Definitely, this is one of the most common species we've encountered out here. And they are pretty conspicuous, especially the ones that are brightly colored like this. And there is, as you can see, a lot of variation in their color. And you will have females that are bright orange like this male here. You'll have males that are dark like the female. So the color 
coloration isn't determined by their sex. In fact, we're not actually sure why there is so much variation in the color that these guys have. There's a lot more research that needs to be done into the lives of these insects, but there are some things that we do know about them. And as Spencer said, these are far from defenseless little yep. insects. So I actually wanted to take a look at this female here because this is actually one of my favorite grasshopper species in the entire country just because I find them so impressive. But you may be wondering, how is it that if they can't fly, they're super large and a bit clumsy and not at all fast moving, how are they avoiding predators? How do they survive out here with the plethora of birds and mammals and even reptiles that would love to take down a grasshopper like this? This species is packing a powerful chemical defense. Eastern lubber grasshoppers are poisonous. What these grasshoppers will do if they feel threatened is they'll produce a toxic foam from their breathing holes, their sphericals that actually lie in the sides of their bodies. And if that gets into the mouth or the eyes of a predator, it's incredibly bitter and acrid. It tastes horrible. So usually the predator will spit it out and give the grasshopper a chance to escape. And not only that, when they're really scared, they can produce an almost bile-like black liquid from their mouths that also tastes really, really bad. So they have multiple forms of chemical defenses that would prevent most kinds of predators from taking them down. But the really interesting thing is that especially their toxins are most effective against vertebrate predators, mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians. But when it comes to other invertebrates, it's actually not known to do that much at all. So things like a praying mantis or a large spider would have a much better shot at taking one of these insects down, which is why I find it so interesting that they have evolved to be so large, the largest grasshopper in the country. I wonder if some of that evolutionary pressure is because a grasshopper like this would be significantly heavier than the vast majority of invertebrate predators that would encounter one. So even the size alone protects them where their poison can't. And the combination of their size, and as you're seeing with the male here, that bright coloration is basically an advertisement to any would-be predator that they are toxic and not a species you would want to eat. In nature, bright colors usually simplify either danger or some sort of toxin. We call that aposematic coloration or warning colors. And this is a perfect example of how that manifests in nature. Now the female here, you don't get quite as much of that aposematism, but you can see a little bit of yellow or orange kind of lining her wings there. And really, sometimes even just a big jet black mm -hmm. insect can be a form of aposematism in itself, because it's rather unusual to see an insect this large, especially during the day, with colors like that. So it's kind of that shock factor that could deter a potential predator. But the good news is, these insects are absolutely harmless to people, so you have nothing to worry about, as long as you don't try and eat one, which I don't know why you would. But they are absolutely one of the coolest looking grasshoppers I think in the entire country and we are very happy to finally make a full episode about the United States largest grasshopper species. Literally, as we were getting B-roll of the grasshoppers, the male mounted the female and is trying to initiate mating. That is absolutely insane. This is hilarious. She's actually eating during the process of mating. Sounds like the life to me. But now that they're doing this, we have no reason to disturb them any further. The female was basically found right here and the male was just across the path. So we're gonna leave them to it. But there you go, the largest grasshopper in the entire country. The pressure to survive in nature often pushes animals to the extreme. And with their impressive size and powerful chemical defenses, Eastern lubber grasshoppers are a perfect example of that. Sharing the stories of incredible yet overlooked wildlife is one of the biggest reasons we started this channel. And there are virtually countless species that we could cover in this shorter and more focused format of video. But this is when we want to hear from you. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more videos in this style, let us know in the comments. Getting your input really helps us to improve the quality of our content. So we greatly appreciate any and all feedback. Now, I totally get that insects aren't everyone's favorite animals, but whether you realize it or not, I guarantee you're grateful that they exist. If you want to see what makes insects so important for the planet and for our daily lives, check out this video, where we show you why the world without insects would be a very unpleasant place. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.